In your first 10 pages, do show your hero or anti-hero. Do show them living their everyday life before anything extraordinary happens that moves the story forward. Do create empathy for your main character, or as Blake Snyder likes to call it, save the cat. This refers to any action your character takes in order to get the audience on his or her side. You want to hear more about this? Well, watch this video over here. It's all about how you can get your audience to experience emotion. It's important to utilize the methods and techniques that I talk about in that video in order to build a bridge from the character to the audience. If you do this correctly, then your audience will actually psychologically become that character, and that is exactly what you want. In your first 10 pages, do introduce your major players in your story. Don't misspell anything. That means that when you're on your second, third, or fourth draft and you're ready to send it out to film festivals or send out some query letters, do not do that yet. First, send it out to get the spelling checked. Because I know if your brain is anything like mine's, when I read things, I typically read them the way things are supposed to be read, not necessarily as they are. Now that's where I know I fall short. I know that there are screenwriters who are capable of proofreading their own work, but I'm not one of them. Do not format your script improperly. If you would like more information on how to format a screenplay or script, please watch this video right here. Oh yeah, we've heard it all before. The first 10 pages are the most important portion of your screenplay because most producers or readers don't really get past the first 10 pages. Honestly, they don't really get past the first three, but we're gonna ignore that. So what exactly does an experienced producer or reader look for in the first 10 pages? Is there anything that you can do to wow them? Well, let's find out. Hey everybody, Alan Northern here giving you filmmaking tips and tricks and today, we are going to talk about how you need to write your first 10 pages of your screenplay. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe. I make videos basically every single week. And if you're not new here, or even if you are new here, you know the drill. Please, 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 please hit that like button. You know I'm about to deliver you that fire. So please hit that like button and let's get started. The like button pleases the algorithm God. So please hit that like button. All right, let's get started. So right off the bat, what are a few things that will wow a producer? Pacing, specificity, formatting and grammar, style and voice, and of course, overall storytelling quality. So first, let's hit on pacing. How quickly is your story moving from page to page? Are we learning fun and exciting things about the characters we're being introduced to? Are we leading up into a big life-changing event? A lot of people are giving Blake Snyder flack for his page 12 catalyst comment that he mentioned in his book, Save the Cat. Always, you always hear it all the time. Well, why does a catalyst have to happen on page 12? Why can't I put it on page 15? Well, why has there gotta be a catalyst? Okay, listen, shut up. Here's the deal. Have you ever been watching a movie for 15 minutes or so and you're like checking your watch, like when the hell is this gonna be over? Like, what the hell did I just watch? What, what, there's nothing happening. It is the most annoying thing in the world to be watching something and be dying of boredom. Typically this boredom is due to no catalyst. It's really astounding to me that this error is still being made today. In one of my old scripts, The Roses, the catalyst occurs on page by this point, my main character's child goes missing and all hell breaks loose. And that event changes the trajectory of the entire film. Boom, slap, something happened. Now the real fun can begin. The earlier you can make your MC get slapped in the face and make that audience feel that slap in the face, the better. Again, for more info on how to make your audience experience emotion, watch this video right here. All right, I mentioned this tip in my writing action video I made a while back. Your screenplay should ooze specificity in every aspect of your writing. Well, what do you mean by that, Alan? Well, I'll tell you what. Instead of music plays in the background, what kind of music is playing in the background? Is it diegetic or non-diegetic sound? And if it is diegetic, what's the music playing on? What song is playing? How your characters speak should be unique to each and every individual in your story. The clarity or murkiness of the environment. How is each and every sentence delivered to another character making him or her feel? Does that aid or hinder your story's ability to hint at the central conflict? Storytelling quality. Now the quality of your entire screenplay is typically judged by these five criteria. Premise, storyline, structure, characterization, and dialogue. The premise is the unique characteristics your story has combined with the unique details that lay the foundation for him to encounter his problem. 
The attributes surrounding your story's setup. The more original the premise, the better. Storyline. Okay, so we all know what storyline is, right? But in this video here, I highlight a few things that you gotta keep in mind in order to keep your storyline dope or make your storyline dope. So if you haven't seen it, please take a look at it here. It is one of the most underrated videos on my channel. And in this video, I also highlight the essential elements necessary in order to make your screenplay great. So structure, okay? Structure is it almost become like a dirty word in the screenwriting industry. Your screenplay must have it. Whatever, use whatever structure technique you want to. Use what structure technique works for you. Use the one that works for you. There are many. There's Blake Snyder's beat sheet method, which I outline in detail in this video called Master Structure. There's Michael Haig's six stages of plot structure, which he highlights in his book. There's John Truby's 22 step story method he outlines in his book. There's Dan Harmon's story circle. So honestly, between utilizing one of these four methods, you'll have great story structure. So don't worry about that. Just pick one. So characterization, it is the sum of all observable qualities of a human being. Age, IQ, sex, sexuality, style of speech, gesture, education, and occupation are all a part of your character's characterization. All aspects of humanity we could gather from a human being by watching a person, observing a person, and taking notes of their behavior day to day. So you want to have unique characterization and you also want to reveal true character, which is revealed when your protagonist is put under the greatest amount of stress and pressure. Dialogue, the words that come out of your character's mouths. Each and every time a character opens his or her mouth, you want each and every line of dialogue to reflect who that character is. How do you do that? You do that by looking at things like what they want. What do they want in life? What do they want in the scene? What do they want out of the other person? Your dialogue should be so specific that when you cover up the name and your friend reads the script, your friend is able to separate the characters just off of the words that's coming out of their mouth without looking at their names. They're able to say, oh, that's Meredith. Ooh, that's Reese. Ooh, that's Rose. Now there's this incredible book on dialogue that I highly recommend. It's called Dialogue by Robert McKee. It is incredible. Please read it. I'll place a link to the book in the description below. And if any of you are interested in purchasing it, then please click on the link below. By clicking on the link below, you'll be supporting the channel at no additional cost to you once you purchase the book. I'll get a tiny, 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 tiny little commission at no additional cost to you. So again, there's a really cool video I think you should check out on my channel called What Makes a Great Screenplay. This video goes into depth on these five factors of a solid story, which is premise, storyline, characterization, structure, and dialogue. <laughs> This is also how your script is going to be judged when you submit it anywhere. It is super important that by the time your audience is finished reading the first 10 pages of your screenplay, that they know exactly what kind of genre they're reading. So they need to know what kind of film you're making by the first 10 pages. Its genre should be pretty obvious to the audience. They should know whether it's a horror, thriller, suspense, drama, action, or romance. Now, I might have missed this in the beginning, meaningful conflict. Now, the first 10 pages should certainly have many forms of conflict, but it's important not to just add conflict for the sake of conflict, because it's conflict and conflict is interesting. No, the conflict has actually got to mean something. It has to grow or stem from a burning, deep desire or inadequacy that is deeply rooted in your characters that has far reaching and meaningful impact to your story. Whew, said that sentence. Take that to the bank and uh, put it in your safety deposit box. Maybe I'll make a video on meaningful conflict later. Formatting grammar. In the first draft of your screenplay, you're almost always gonna have poor grammar. And uh, that's certainly not ideal. And it's important when rewriting to ask yourself, well, how can I make this action line shorter? How can I make it more specific? What adjectives, verbs, nouns, similes, or metaphors could I use to put a more clear picture in the minds of my readers in a very clear, concise way? Also, can you structure a sentence properly? Hope I'm not offended nobody. Now, I'm not saying you should be using big words. No, your words should clearly and descriptively identify what events are occurring in your story in real time, present tense. And if you need more info on writing action, again, take a look at this video right here. I talk a lot about that in this video and I also go over different scripts and the techniques that they utilize in order to write action properly. Okay, style, voice, we've all heard it before. But what is style? What is voice? 
This is word choice, sentence structure, rhythm of character speech. They're all aspects you can start with when trying to refine your style. Think of Quentin Tarantino, for instance. He is the godfather of stylized screenplay. Think of the grotesque action, the over-the-top dialogue, the absurd number of curse words, those kinds of things. These are events that occur in your story, and even the pacing of the scene. So basically, when it comes down to it, there's one way that I would highly recommend that you choose to identify your style and hone in your style. Okay, you listening? So this is an exercise that you can perform and refine. First off, start by rewriting a scene in your script. That's it, one scene. After you do that, pick out four screenplays that you really love. From those four screenplays, pick out your four favorite scenes. Now you're gonna wanna rewrite those four scenes that you really admire. So you're basically rewriting those scenes from memory based off of the basic gist of what happened, not doing a word for word verbatim, no. You're just trying to get the same basic things to occur in each scene here, not a beat for beat rewrite. Now after you're finished, go back and then rewrite the scene that you rewrote in your script. And I guarantee that the scene that you wrote will look very different from the scene that you wrote originally. So many details that you wrote about that scene is going to change. And that's basically your brain automatically putting in the things that you admired about the work that you enjoyed and internalizing that and then outputting what you liked. So the final thing that I believe can make your 10 pages better is something that I actually learned in film school. And this technique actively displays that your story functions on multiple levels, right? There's what your audience sees and processes with their consciousness, and then the undercurrent are the themes and the central conflict, the metaphor that your story is going for. So how do I actively display that my story is functioning on multiple levels? Well, by hinting at the central conflict or the solution to said central conflict. So in another video, I believe I'll talk about my first 10 pages instead of the first 10 pages in order to show you and exemplify what I meant by that. I'm thinking about making another video about my first 10 pages, some things I think I got right, and it'll also showcase a lot of the mistakes that I've made so that you don't make them as well. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and comment below. I've also made a film called The Brotherhood. It's on Amazon Prime, please watch it. I also have a product that I made called a Clover Key. It's a bottle opener for filmmakers and also serves as a replacement to your quarter that you're using to screw off the tripod plate from your camera. It's always fun talking to you guys and I'll see you next time. See ya.